Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with Greenlight Shooting and welcome to this new video. Today we are talking about which handgun is right for you. Now that's a big topic. I know it's like, a, I mean, it's impossible to answer everyone's questions, but I hope this video really does help. Now before we get into it, I do want to mention I am at TNT Guns and Range in Murray, Utah. This is absolutely one of my favorite ranges. The Just the facilities here, the staff here, the selection is all off the charts. So if you're in Utah, definitely check them out. Their information is down in the video description below. Uh, next thing I want to point out is I'm rocking that hot, hot Give Rise Tactical shirt. If you dig this, make sure to pick one up. It is the second link down in the video description below. Now, let's get into the guns. So, well, before we get into the guns, actually, let me preface this. Because as I mentioned, this is a big topic. There's a lot to cover here. Um, so, how this video is going to work is I'm going to like, just get an assortment of maybe the five-ish most popular handguns, in my opinion, right now. And then I'm going to kind of say who I think that they're best for. Experience level, you know, what categories they fit into, stuff like that. And then at the end, hopefully you can kind of, you know, cross-reference them, whatever, and decide which handgun is best for you based on that criteria. Now, uh, a couple questions to ask yourself if you're looking for your first handgun or your next handgun, whatever it is. Um, number one is, what is your experience level? So, you know, are you a very experienced shooter? Or do you own a ton of handguns and you're just looking for your next one? Or have you never shot your entire life and you're looking to get into a handgun uh, and you're just not sure, you know, even what's out there? Um, the other thing to ask yourself is what are you going to use this handgun for primarily? Uh, the three kind of basic answers to that question I hear most frequently are, number one, I just want a gun to shoot at the range. You know, I want to get more familiar with guns, I want to get practice in, I want to get into the sport of shooting. Uh, the other option is a gun for concealed carry. So, you know, this is a gun that you're planning on having on you every single day. This is your concealed carry gun, it's going to go everywhere with you. Uh, and the third option is, like a home defense gun, just a defense gun in, in general. You know, you want something in the nightstand, you want something in the truck, whatever it is, you want a gun for defensive purposes, as well as, you know, taking it to the range and, and being able to shoot a little bit. So those are the three most common answers I hear to that question. Obviously, there's a little bit of overlap, but it's really hard to find a gun that fits all three of those. So keep that in mind. The other thing to consider here is any disabilities. You know, maybe you're really elderly or you're shopping for a really elderly grandma or something like that. Or maybe you've lost the use of your left arm. Those are the kinds of things that you want to keep in mind when you're considering a new handgun. Uh, you know, if you're racking the slide and you, you know, you don't have the functionality of two of two arms, like keep that in mind. That's going to obviously affect your choice highly. Uh, last thing to keep in mind is budget. So with each of these handguns, I'll go through them. I'll mention the budget. I'll mention the features, and I'll mention kind of what uh, categories, what person I think this would be best suited for. Okay, sorry for that lengthy introduction. I wanted to preface all that, but now let's get into the guns. All right, so we are going to start out with the Ruger Mark IV. This one specifically is the tactical. There's lots of different options, uh, but this is chambered in 22 long rifle. Now, the reason I want to show a 22 long rifle first is because it's very, very easy to shoot, especially this gun. This is an all aluminum gun. It's got a four and a half inch barrel, and it weighs almost 35 ounces, which is very, very heavy for a gun. Uh, but what that's going to al allow it to do is take up the very little recoil that a 22 already has. So this thing has almost no recoil. It is incredibly easy to shoot. So I think that's awesome for people who are new to guns and who are a little skeptical about the recoil and they're a little afraid about those bigger calibers. This is an awesome learning platform. It really helps you get your fundamentals down, your, your stance, your grip, your focus, your trigger control, without having to worry about the squeeze and recoil, you know what I mean? So. I think this is a fantastic first option. Now there are plenty other good 22 handguns out there, but I like this one because of the weight, because of the barrel, because it's just easy to shoot. So this gun has a 10 round capacity, uh, and it's got a very simple function. So on this side you can see it's got a safety right here. Uh, you can get you know good peace of mind. Red means it'll shoot. If the red is covered, it means it's not going to shoot. So super simple. And then rather than dealing with an entire slide like most uh, semi-auto handguns, this has just got a little piece on the back here, this little bolt that you're going to pull back. And if there was a round in the magazine, this would just fly forward and load a round into the gun. So super simple to use. The last thing I want to point out about it is that back here, there's just a little button. With the Ruger Mark IVs, They've made cleaning this gun way, way simpler. So before it was sort of complicated. Now you're literally just pushing on this button and you can lift this thing off. So you can see how simple that is to take apart and clean and field strip. And uh, yeah, it's just a gun that's really tailored well to beginners. 
Price-wise, MSRP on this is like 550 or 560. It's pretty high. But TNT has this gun listed right now for 415 bucks. Uh, you can even get the older models, like the Mark III and stuff like that. I want to say for like 350. So it's it's really a pretty inexpensive gun, uh, but it's going to hold up for you over time. It's going to teach you those fundamentals until you can step up into a larger caliber or larger handgun. So yeah, that is the Ruger Mark IV, chambered in 22 LR. Uh, let's move on to the next one. All right, so next up we are talking about the Ruger SP-101 Revolver chambered in 357 Magnum. Now, the reason I went with 357 is because it also allows you to load 38 Special Rounds. Now, if you're not familiar with that, 38 Special is just basically a smaller, lighter load. Uh, so if you're not comfortable shooting 357 yet, or you don't want to spend the money to shoot 357 all the time, you can shoot 38 Special at the, at the range, get a little more comfortable with it. And then I went with the 2.25 inch barrel here, so it's a little bit smaller, so you can carry this concealed and when you're carrying concealed, you can load this up with 357 to make sure you're getting, you know, the most power out of those rounds. Now, uh, another big factor with this gun is I went with a stainless steel body. There are a lot of them out there that are sort of the airweight ones, titanium, I don't know what it is, but they're very, very light. Now, it's awesome for concealed carry because you forget it's on you, but they are terrible to shoot at the range. <laughs> they just beat your wrist up. They have so much recoil. But they're just not fun to shoot. Uh, so this one kind of helps to bridge that gap as well. This stainless steel frame is pretty heavy, weighing in at 26 ounces. Uh, and so it'll take up a lot of that recoil while you're at the range. And it's just a little bit easier to shoot, a little more pleasant to shoot over time. Um, the grip is somewhat little. I mean, it's not super ideal for long periods at the range, but it's enough to where, you know, you want to go and you shoot a box just to stay comfortable with the gun. And, uh, uh, it's great for that. This is a double and single action gun, meaning that you can pull this trigger with the hammer up like this, or you can pull this hammer back and pull the trigger with a very light trigger pull. Now that's awesome because it means that there are no moving parts. There's no like slide you need to maneuver or anything like that. Now that's awesome because, you know, if you have lost some strength in your other arm or something, or maybe you're buying this for an elderly relative or something like that, they don't have to worry about racking that slide under pressure. There's no way this thing's gonna jam because if you have a bad round, you just pull that trigger again and it's going to check out this barrel or check out this cylinder. If I pull this trigger, you see how it's rotating that cylinder? Uh, it's just going to the next round. So if you have a bad round for some, for some reason, just pull the trigger again. It's going to rotate that cylinder and you're on to the next round. No need to, you know, deal with jams in your slide, anything like that. So it's very simple. Um, all it is to take this thing out is you just push this button right here and then push that cylinder. That'll open up. You've got five rounds in here. To empty that, you can just push this down. It'll eject all your spent shells, load this thing back up push it in and you're absolutely ready to go. In terms of who I think this is best for, I think this is really awesome for those people who are getting into guns who are, you know, already somewhat familiar with them or who want a gun for concealed carry. They want to feel like they have enough power behind their gun to really, you know, have some good peace of mind. That 357 mag is obviously a big powerful round, uh, but also the 38 is awesome for those newer shooters who just want to get a little more practice in. Um, it's awesome for concealed carry because it's got that shorter uh, barrel. You can go with a longer barrel if you know you're not going to be using this for concealed. It makes it a little bit easier to shoot at the range. Um, and it's also great for people who don't want to deal with slides and moving parts and, and jams and stuff like that. Uh, it's just a very simplistic gun. So uh, price-wise, I think MSRP, you're at like 720 which is pretty high for this thing. Uh, TNT has this gun listed at $560. That's probably pretty close, between 550 and 600 is I bet where you'll find this in most places. So next up we have the Sig Sauer P320 handgun. Now uh, this one specifically is chambered in 9mm, but they're very, very modular. That's the thing, that's the biggest thing that this has going for it that I think everyone likes about it. Uh, so a couple things to point out, first of all, uh, in terms of like custom fit for your hand, you can actually switch out this entire bottom frame uh, for your different sized hands. So it's no longer just about back straps. You can actually get a small, medium, large size frame to fully fit your hand, which is a really nice option. Uh, the next thing is the trigger here. The trigger is striker fired, but it's got a really, really crisp pull and a quick reset. So, uh, you know, this is definitely tailored to a little bit more experienced shooter who can appreciate those kinds of things. Uh, next thing to point out, first of all, 
I guess I'll say. This is the four inch barrel option. There are a couple different sizes. There's a smaller size if you want specific concealed carry. There's a little bit longer size as well if you want uh, you know, a little more accuracy, a little bit easier to shoot. Um, but this one I believe is like, it's like 3.9 inches or so. Now this thing's biggest claim to fame is its modularity. You can actually uh, take this trigger group and convert it to uh, from a nine to a 40, 45, whatever you want to do. And I do have a video on this. You can check it out more in depth. I don't really want to go into it in this video for the sake of time, but just know that that is an option. So a lot of people really like this 320 because they can have all sorts of different options. They can have smaller guns, larger guns, uh, different calibers. Now with most SIG guns, you're getting like night sights, you're getting a tack rail here if you want to throw a flashlight, a laser, whatever it is on there. And then the magazine will hold 17 rounds. So I mean, you're getting very good, high quality uh, features out of pretty much all of SIG's guns. But the 320's big claim to fame is its modularity. Uh, this gun runs for $589.99 here at TNT. I want to say MSRP is like 700-ish, don't quote me on that. You can check out SIG's website for the actual specs and, and all that stuff. But anyways, uh, if modularity is your thing, if you want a gun that's gonna last you a long time, that you can, that you don't have to be stuck to one exact style, you know, you can switch up that caliber, you can switch up those hand, the, 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 you know, the grip size and stuff like that. If that stuff appeals to you, the 320 is fantastic. This is a good gun for all those different categories, you know, concealed carry, it is, you can carry this thing concealed as far as its size goes. It's gonna be a little bit bigger, it's gonna be a little bit more heavy, uh, but it is doable if you have a bigger frame, if you don't mind that heft, um, it's a good option. It's obviously more than capable for at home, it's got 17 rounds. This thing is great for defense and it's great at the range. It's easy to shoot. Uh, all that modularity keeps you, you know, interested in the gun. The high quality features will keep this thing lasting for a very long time. We've got two guns for this next one and it's because they both sort of occupy the same space. Uh, but I wanted to showcase them both because they have a little bit different ergonomics and style. Uh, so, you know, if one appeals to you more, go with that one. But generally speaking, they're pretty dang similar. So, first up, we have the Glock 19. Now Glock has a very large range of different guns. They're all similar in terms of, of shape and size and stuff like that. Well, in terms of like form, right? But they're different shapes and sizes, let's put it that way. Uh, the Glock 19 specifically is the nine millimeter and it's their compact size. So there's usually a full size, there's a compact and a subcompact uh, and a single stack. So this one fits kind of right in the middle there. And the reason I chose that is because it fits most of those categories, as I mentioned. Uh, it's great for shooting at the range. It's a very comfortable gun to shoot. Um, it can still be concealed carry. In fact, it's the gun that I personally conceal. It's, it's slightly large for concealed carry. You know, it's not great. Usually I'll, I'll wear like a jacket or a long sleeve or something with it, uh, but it's certainly still concealable. And uh, you know, it obviously works well for at home defense, whatever it is you wanna do. So this is kind of a, a great jack of all trades gun. Uh, the other one we have here, this is the, M the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 Compact. Now this is one of their newer guns. It sort of fills sort of that same gap. It's kind of the same size, the same features and stuff like that. But one of the big things is it's got this palm swell back here as opposed to the Glock, which is a little more rectangular. I like that palm swell. It fills kind of your, your palm a little bit easier and better as well as a stippled, little bit more aggressive grip than the Glock. Um, so, you know, my hands are a little sweatier. I like that little bit more aggressive grip. Triggers are pretty similar. They're very easy both of these to drop in a new trigger though if you want if you're a little more advanced um, both are have a 15 round capacity so you've got plenty of rounds for like that concealed carry option for home defense as well as at the range you don't want to be reloading every two seconds so it gives you plenty of rounds to play around with they've both got tack rails here if you want to throw on uh, you know a, a light or a laser or whatever it is the MMP definitely has a little more beef to it you know it's a little bit heavier it's a, it seems a little bit wider with this palm swell and then up here they have beefed this front up a little bit to help kind of take up some of that recoil, add a little more rigidity up here, which is a welcome addition. Both of these are fantastic options and they're great for absolutely pretty much all of those categories, as I mentioned. For any experience level, you know, if you're an advanced shooter and you don't own a Glock, a Glock is just a, it's a good gun to have. Both of these guns will absolutely stand up to, in terms of durability tests, they'll stand up to the best. I mean, you can chuck these things around, throw them in the truck, throw them in the mud, underwater, whatever, these things will still come out firing. Both really good guns. The one thing I will mention about these is neither of these have external safeties. So they don't have that thumb safety that you're flicking up and, and seeing a red or anything like that to tell you when it's ready to fire. When you have a round loaded in this chamber, 
it's gonna go if you pull that trigger. So if you need that peace of mind of actually seeing a physical external safety, uh, these guns may not be the best for you. These guns are certainly safe though. They have plenty of internal safeties as well as the trigger drop safety, stuff like that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you are the safety. You know, if you don't put your finger on that trigger, if you don't pull that trigger, the gun's not going to fire period. You can drop this thing while it's loaded, whatever. It's not going to fire unless that trigger is pulled. So if you have the self-discipline, if you uh, understand that and have the training, then this thing is just as safe as anything else with an external safety. Um, but that is definitely something you want to keep in mind when purchasing these. So as I mentioned, the Glock 19 here, this one uh, runs for about 600 bucks here at TNT Guns and Range, and this Smith & Wesson runs for about 500. So you're actually saving 100 bucks going this way. Uh, if this gun was out when I bought my Glock 19, I'm not gonna lie, I might have gone with this thing. I really, really dig this style, the feel, the ergonomics of it. The trigger's a little bit more crisp, honestly, probably in this than the Glock, if I was gonna be nitpicky about it. Uh, the one thing that would hold me back is this does weigh a touch more than that, as I mentioned. So for concealed carry, I think the Glock may still have the edge, but it's not by much. And last but not least, I got one for the true gun collector. This one, is the Nighthawk GRP Recon 1911, custom 1911, chambered in 45 ACP. This is a true baller of a gun here. This is for collectors, this is for people who want the absolute highest performance out of their handguns. So obviously this isn't for a first time handgun owner, this is for someone who has been shooting for a very long time, who demands the very best from their guns, or just wants a gun to put up in their trophy case because this thing is worthy of it. Now, Nighthawk is a, is a custom 1911 manufacturer. Everything's made in the US, which is awesome. And they're very, very, very high end. As you can see, a couple of the external features here. Uh, it does come with this Surefire X300 Ultra, which is a $220 light. I mean, that thing isn't playing around. I'm gonna read you guys a couple of the features off of my phone here because I don't wanna get them wrong with this gun. <laughs> All right. So the finish is black nitride. Uh, it's a five inch barrel, as I mentioned. It's a government size, the recon frame. It's got a match grade 45 ACP barrel. It's a Heine Ledge straight eight tritium night sights. So tritium night sights up here. Um, G10 Gator back grips with Nighthawk logos. Uh, 25 lines per inch checkered front strap and mainspring housing, shortened slide stop and beveled frame, lightweight aluminum Nighthawk custom tri-cavity trigger, completely dehorned for comfortable carry, new ultra high cut front strap, and a checkered recoil spring plug. Basically, this thing has all of the fixings you could possibly want out of a 1911. The trigger is just absolutely so crisp. The slide is stupid how smooth it is. It's stupid. Like you hear glass as a, you know, as a sort of a reference on what it feels like to slide a nice slide 1911. This is just as smooth. You can feel the tolerances are just, they're so good. They're so good. This gun is so high end. The Nighthawk Custom GRP Recon and 45 1911. This thing is running you about $3,200. It's a pricey little thing. Uh, they have this listed here at TNT for $3,194. So as I said, about $3,200 right there. Uh, but you're getting the absolute best of the best in the 1911 world. All custom made, all custom fitted. Just a fantastic, fantastic gun. Uh, so yeah, if you're looking for your next handgun and you're wanting to really step up your game, here you go, baby. I had to show it. So anyways, the Nighthawk Custom GRP Recon 1911 and 45.